Hi, I'm Mihir Joshi and welcome to another episode of The MJ Show. Now, today I've got someone very, very special here in uh, uh, in the show with me. Uh, someone who I take great pleasure in calling my friend and uh, I've known him for many, many years. Actually, I had him on my radio show about eight years ago, a long, long time back. And then a couple of years ago, again, when he released a fantastic song. Uh, also, a very special episode for me today because this is the first Marathi artist that I have on the show. And yes, I'll admit he's done a few things beyond Marathi music as well. But some of my favorite songs in the Marathi music space that have come out in the last few years are made by this man. He's got some great, great stories to tell you as well and gives me great ple pleasure to introduce to you my friend, the incredible Kaushal Anamda. Hi. Hi Kaushal, welcome Hi, to the show. You. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Great, great having you. Like I said just a little while ago, yeah. we actually met about eight years ago on my radio show back right. back in the day. Yes. And then a couple of years ago when you released the Marathi Abhiman Geet, That's which right. I was incredibly, incredibly uh, happy to feature on my show and proud of That's right. uh, as a friend and as a musician in the circuit. I remember you attended uh, some recording sessions. Some of recording the, sessions of the of yeah. the of the song as well. And uh, incidentally, we'll talk in depth about the marathi Ab abhiman geet which i think was a was a milestone song in in india i'm not talking about the marathi music space i think in general yes. i think it had over 100 singers uh, it had uh, over uh, 450 singers 400 oh yeah of course including yes, all the backing the chorus yeah backing. otherwise it had uh, uh, around 112 established artists established artists who were singing and everybody i mean i'm talking about the legends in the industry i mean right. if you could just spout out a few names just to give people an idea uh, uh, starting from ravindra sathe yeah. suresh wadkar hmm. aarti anklekar ashwini bhide deshpande pandit satyashil deshpande uh, shankar mahadevan hari haran mahalakshmi ayer hamsika ayer <laughs> And uh, Audhut Gupte. I'll make Ajay his life Atul. easier. I'll make yeah. his life easier. If you just search for Marathi Abhiman Geet on the net, you'll find enough information about the about the song, and you'll be able to read the names of all the people who have sung the song. And I got to tell you, I think even in terms of packaging, you released uh, the CD yes. in a beautiful uh, red, red package, package, and I, I still have that at home with me and it's such a beautiful package and uh, i think the entire song was phenomenal and, and i'll tell you why this song was made i love the story behind the making of this song but that comes much later in the story of kaushal ananda so we're going to go back to the very start now kaushal uh, we are at your home here in dadar yes uh, in fact just before we started shooting you was telling me a very interesting coincidence about this position location of this, this. location yeah yes. so before we actually begin with your musical journey i think yeah. we should share that story with our with our viewers yes you know uh, there is a window this side yeah. of the house yeah and uh, from the window you can see a building right, right across right uh, the building is called uma right uh, in uma we had uh, yesteryear's legendary music composer hmm. snehal bhatkar okay staying in uma for a very long time correct the next building uh, uh, there's a stall right beside yeah. Uma. Yeah. Uma, where the legendary music director Pyarelal ji used to be. From Lakshmi Khan Pyarelal. From Lakshmi Khan Pyarelal, duo fame. Right. Okay, and then this is the third building. Right. And this is where I stay. Correct. So, uh, you know, if one believes in destiny, huh. then we have two great music directors <laughs> of yes, two eras. <laughs> of two different Nehal eras. Bhatkar ji was from the earlier era. Correct. Then, then Pyarelal ji. Pyar and Pyar then yeah. uh, from this era. But no. that is not where the coincidence ends. Exactly. Ends, you know? Yeah. Uh, right now, I have just finished recording for a, a movie called Pitrurun. Okay. It's uh, Nitish Bharadwaj's first directorial uh, oh, wow. venture. Uh, for those of you who don't remember Nitish Bharadwaj, which is very difficult, but if you yeah. don't, in case you're watching us somewhere outside India, he was Shri Krishna Shri on, Krishna on Mahabharat. Mahabharat. Yes. That's Incredible right. stuff. Yes. So he's uh, he has adapted uh, Sudha Murthy's short story to a film. Okay. And uh, Tanuja ji, that yeah. uh, Kajol's, Kajol's mother. Yeah. She is acting after a long time. You know, acting in a lead role. That is. Right. Right. So uh, the coincidence, you know, continues there. Yes, because where, because the first film that you remember of uh, Tanuja huh? is Hamari uh, Yaad Aayegi. For which music, For was, which given music by was given by Snehal Bhatkar ji. Wow. Kabhi tanhaiyo meyo hamari yaad aayegi. Wow. That was a song. Right. And uh, you remember Tanuja featuring on that uh, song. Correct. And then when she was at the peak of her career. Yeah. Uh, 
Let's start at the very beginning <laughs> a very good place, place to start. start but there is no such thing as a beginning correct because you know time is such a crazy thing yeah that the moment i feel that uh, no this is where it I, began it yeah. began yeah. then you start going backwards and then you think oh no maybe oh, before na, that there yeah, was something yeah. else that but yes got i mean started. this music uh, the germ of music yeah. came from my genes because my grandfather was a violinist oh lovely okay and uh, that is my maternal grandfather right and uh, he was a you know he was a very uh, crazy sort of a person because okay. he uh, he played in the first marathi talki oh, that wow. is the second indian talki okay. ayodhya sa raza by v shantaram oh man so that was in the year 1932 and Sweet, man. in 1933 huh. he felt that you know he should go uh, to the west okay. to learn the violin okay. because that is where the instrument comes from comes from exactly so he simply sat in a ship okay and uh, he bought a ticket to london okay and he didn't know where he was going right but, uh, london la jaise london la jaise and ah. you, you go there and learn music correct western music right now it so happened that the ship was uh, coming from australia okay with a music uh, Uh, conductor okay uh, called fedezenne mariano he was an italian music composer okay and he was traveling on that ship okay and he heard my grandfather playing in the cabin okay and he knew because he was playing indian music right on the violin right mariano thought that this was some different music being played okay so he tapped on his cabin and huh. when he opened the door he said what are you playing he said huh. i am playing indian music my grandfather said right and he said this is strange music i mean i have not heard Anything this type like this. of music yeah, yeah, before yeah where are you going he said i am going to london why to study western music huh. with whom he said i don't know <laughs> so mariano said on that ship huh. he told my grandfather that why don't you come with me to italy oh man and uh, you know i'll teach you western music you huh. teach me indian music wow and uh, we can share some notes incredible and that's where my grandfather decided okay i'll Chalo, go to let's italy, go to italy, italy instead of italy london <laughs> and then he went to a place called uh, there is a small village on the outskirts of uh, on the border of france and uh, italy italy okay. where he stayed for 6 months okay and uh, he learned for 6 months he learned english music with uh, fedezenne mariano okay he also performed in italy and netherlands oh, wow. and i still have some cuttings okay of his uh, like uh, newspaper concerts yeah okay. newspaper cuttings from his concerts right and he got so famous in those 6 months okay that uh, i have a cutting from a newspaper cutting from a dutch newspaper which says that the uh, yahudi menu in from the east has come here oh my god and uh, he even mussolini who was ruling at that time right he heard of my grandfather okay and he called my grandfather to naples okay to play in play for him. him oh my okay. god okay and uh, the news is i mean the story goes that uh, mussolini gave him 15 minutes okay but when he actually started playing mm. that time stretched to 45 minutes wow and in those 45 minutes yeah my grandfather played marathi natya sangeet for mussolini So you know Mussolini had heard this oh my god what a <laughs> story fantastic story and then he went to uh, Britain okay. where he was the first asian musician ha huh. to perform a solo performance on the bbc radio oh man yeah and uh, okay uh, this is incredible what i've got goosebumps right now yeah, <laughs> on a story goosebumps. on a story about a man in the 30s who just 
Hey, that's his grandfather. That's his <laughs> grandfather who did all of these things. Yeah. What an incredible story, man. This is an incredible story. Okay, this I is again completely unplanned. We had no I you know, I told Kaushal when I came here, you know, there's no real plan. We're gonna talk about you, we're gonna talk about your music. And I said, let's just talk about things that have happened in your life. And this is such a phenomenal story. Yeah. And then when he came back yeah. and married my grandmother. Yeah. Who was 15 at that time. Okay. The first thing that he did huh. after marriage huh. was in 1930s. I'm talking about 1930s. Yeah. He taught my grandmother how to play the tabla. Oh man, okay. So she could accompany him accompany when he's traveling him. and performing. So you know what a crazy man he must have been. And then uh, he spent his entire life teaching, teaching music. music. And he had an ins he was an insomniac. Okay. So he used to play throughout the night. Okay. Okay. With the mute on the board of the violin. Right. And when us grandchildren, we used to go to Pune. Right. To stay with them. We used to sleep in the same room. Correct. And for the entire night, while we were asleep, we heard his violin in our sleep. Oh. So when we finally woke up right. at 6, 6.30, right. he was playing, say, Lalat or uh, Bhairavi on his... On his violin. violin. So, even today, when I suddenly wake up at night, yeah. I can still hear that violin. Wow. So, that's how it seeped into, into you. Me. So, you know what? This entire story came out of my question. How did music begin for you? This is absolutely fantastic. Wow. So, okay. It's in your genes. Music was in your genes. And it was uh, destined to happen in a way. Right. Let's call it that. Uh, what was the first thing that you did where you felt like, this is something good and this is something I can do. I mean, first, say commercially or people saw it and said that, Kaushal, this is great work and you should be doing this. Right. Uh, <coughs> you know, this realization that I'm going to do music came very late in the day because I started my career as a writer. Okay. Uh, both as a script writer and as a lyric writer. Oh, okay. I also for some time assisted uh, the veteran uh, filmmaker Lake Tandon. Oh, okay. Who did films like Professor and Dulhan Vahi Jopi Aman Bhai. Wow, okay. And, uh, but soon I realized that writing was not my cup of tea as far as commercial writing was concerned. Right, right. You know, sit to, at one place, write for TV shows and that was not my that cup That wasn't of your thing, yeah. But music came naturally to me and, uh, you know, in our college, I was in Ruparel College. Right. And we had a fantastic team of singers and theatre artists at that time. And which is when you also got into theatre in a bit, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Because Chetan Datar, right. uh, the playwright, he right. used to, uh, he was the one who, uh, you know, was very active in, with us in the drama circuit and he taught us a lot of things. Correct. And Sumit Raghavan was there, hmm. Yatin Karrekar, uh, and a lot of good actors. Hmm. They were there at that time and also very good musicians. Kamlesh okay. Bhadkamkar, Ajit Parab, wow, okay. uh, Shilpa Pai, they are all doing very well. They are doing the really well in the industry, industry right now, today. Exactly. So they were all there with me and we decided to do a show okay. of uh, classical Marathi poetry. Okay. Which I had tuned to music. Okay. And when we did it in Chabildas High School. Right. That was the first show that I ever did. Right. And we thought that Shabildas High School, we said we'll keep uh, the concert in a small hall so that yeah. even if less people come. It still seems it's, like it's fair. Yeah, it's yeah. full. Yeah. And uh, finally, the hall overflew because almost 600 people turned up in a hall that has a capacity of 200 to 300 people. Wow, okay. And it was overflowing. A lot of veteran uh, Marathi literatures, okay. uh, poets, musicians. Okay. And even theatre personalities had come to watch the show okay. and the show was a big hit. We right. got almost eight once more in the oh. show and nice. the following week we yeah. got a full page article in the Maharashtra Times right. saying that you know these youngsters are actually uh, archiving Marathi poetry in music. Nice. And this is a big job right. and that is when I knew that this is something you this want is to do. something that I wanted to do because it came naturally to me. Right. I want I was sure that the kind of music that I wanted to do. I was sure about uh, the fact that I wanted to do only music as a career. Fantastic. Do you remember anything that you did in that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I hear you sing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
there, there is a beautiful poem by Balkavi, mm-hmm. and uh, it <coughs> talks about that one moment where night turns into dawn. Okay. It's as if Balkavi, the poet, yeah. has put that one moment under a magnifying glass. Okay. And then you have just the description of silence for the first ten lines. Okay. And in the eleventh and the twelfth line, yeah. that silence is uh, broken. Okay, it's broken. Nice. Yeah. But nice. because it's such a serene silence, right? It doesn't get broken by a huge loud noise. Correct. The kokila, huh. the kaku, yeah, the speaks. bird. Okay. Yeah. And Lovely. that's how the silence is broken. Lovely. Let's hear it. So, ya shubhra viral bhranse ya shubhra viral bhranse shashi bhavati nartan saale shashi bhavati nartan saale. गंभीर धवण वीरजनी गंभीर धवण वीरजनी बेभान पवन हिडो ने या शुभ्र विरल भ्रांसे या शुभ्र विरल भ्रांसे वाह Beautiful, beautiful stuff. And uh, we're gonna take a small break now. Technically, we're not taking a break because this is the internet and there's no break. We're just gonna end this part here. We're gonna come back in part two where I'm gonna talk to Kaushal about a lot of things that are happening these days with him. So lots more to come and some great stories again. And I'm fairly certain that's gonna happen as well. So join me back in part two of the NJ Show with Kaushal and Amdar.